Hey there fellow readers, Rambling Collector here, and welcome back to episode 4 of Let's Read. For the subject of this video, we're going to be diving into another indie author. This one is one whom I've followed for a while now, and if you are familiar with my channel here, you'll probably know who I'm going to be talking about. But, this one is a book that I have not reviewed yet. There is a review coming out for it, it is currently in the works, and it will be released sometime soon. But, for episode 4 of Let's Read, we're going to be doing Snow White and the Seven Gay Roommates by R.I. Polsgrove. Now this one is out of the norm for this author, since no more often than not they cover things like dark fantasy, dark romance, things of that nature. But for this one, it's more of a light-hearted fantasy, and a spin on a modern classic tale. With the premise of it being that Snow White and, of course, the Evil Queen are both very well-known YouTubers, and as someone on who is a YouTuber myself, this book immediately rang with me. However, I'm going to save more of my thoughts for the official review, but if you want to purchase this book for yourself just to see what it's like, I will leave a link to the Amazon link for it down in the description below if you want to check it out, as well as the author themselves actually has a Patreon that you can subscribe to as well if you want to help support them since they are planning to do a weekly release of the chapters of Snow White for their Patreon. So if you want to get the book as a free way, as a way to support the author, go check it out. I will leave a link to their Patreon in the description as well down below, as well as to their YouTube channel if you want to check that out as well. With that being said, let's get started with, let's see here, chapter one. I know this story has been told time and time again, but we're going to tell it again. Every time it's told, you can get something new out of it. It can teach a new lesson, give a new perspective. The possibilities are endless, Rachel said, rising from her chair and walking to the other side of the room. The camera followed her and panned to a middle-aged man standing behind a young girl with a gap-toothed smile. They had the same warm brown eyes and dark hair. The man's hair had started to gray, and he had deep smile lines, but nonetheless he was very good-looking good-looking enough for Rachel, at least, and rich enough. I finally got my happy ending, Rachel squealed, throwing her arms around the man. This is my new husband, Andrew White, and his adorable daughter, Snow, she continued. Snow waved to the camera, and Andrew planted a kiss on Rachel's cheek. I grew up in a poor little town on the edge of Alabama. My family never had much, but then I met Andrew, and the rest is history. Now I have a house, a wonderful stepdaughter, and a wonderful life. Also, our sponsor, Wick Works, makes these lovely candles. She held up a candle. These candles have made my home so welcoming. I'm not going to lie. It has been a hard transition, but Wick Works makes candles with comforting scents like fresh baked bread, clean laundry, new car, and so much more. I am so thankful to them for making these products that made this transition easier and my happy ending even happier. Rachel popped an apple slice into her mouth, utterly captivated by her own performance. She watched as she strutted across the screen, giving a tour of her upper middle class suburban house. The walls were painted pale purple, and the furniture was white or black velvet. Crystal light fixtures hung from the ceiling. There was a custom black marble coffee table in the living room with large floor-to-ceiling windows. She loved the way her Avon curls bounced as she walked. Her hourglass figure was accentuated by her purple designer dress. Her doorbell rang. Rachel jumped and checked the time. Wow, how time flies, she said, closing the laptop and going to answer the door. Her crew entered with polite greetings. They went upstairs to her bedroom. Her set designers got to work placing candles around the room, and Rachel went into the bathroom with her makeup and hairstylist. I want to look like I haven't slept in days, you know, but still pretty. Not too pathetic, but not like, oh my god, now I'm a freaking millionaire after my husband died. Yeah, I get you, her makeup artist, Marlene said, delicately running a brush over Rachel's face. What do you want done with your hair? Kimberly, the stylist, asked. Um, I want something that shows I can still be put together, but I'm really struggling, so, like, maybe a low ponytail. Good choice, Kimberly said as she carefully ran the brush through her hair. Once her hair and makeup were done, she slipped on a form-fitting black dress and black velvet high heels. She stepped in front of her backlit, full-length mirror. Almost flawless, but that's how she was supposed to look. Marlene made her makeup look natural and added some eyeshadow below her emerald eyes. Her red hair was pulled back in a low ponytail with a few loose strands framing her face. She leaned in to get a better look at herself. That's when she saw it. Crow's feet around her eyes. Disgusting. Marlene, she said sharply. Yes, Marlene asked. 
There was a tinge of nervousness to her voice. Why didn't you fix these? she asked, pointing to the lines. I thought you wanted to be more natural, Marlene said slowly. Rachel rolled her eyes. Not like gross natural. Really, you should know better by now. Marlene sighed and looked down, taking a moment to compose herself. All right, let me see what I can do. She guided Rachel back to the chair and touched up the makeup. Better? she asked, holding up a mirror. Rachel inspected her face. Her skin was smooth, not a hint of aging to be found. Much better, she said, handing the mirror back. She walked out of her closet and into her bedroom, where the crew was setting up lighting. The set designers were setting up the sponsored products in clear view of the cameras on her crew's foam. Her camera crew was three hopeless, horny, frat boy film students. Evan, Tyler, and Bryce. They did it all, shooting, editing, and uploading. Rachel strutted onto her immaculate set and took her place in front of the camera. In return, they received extra credit in their film class and the occasional, heavily edited sexy picture of Rachel. Of course, she made them sign an NDA and agreed to never show the pictures anywhere else. Hey, Rachel, Evan said, coming up to her with a nervous grin. So, um, stop it right there, she said, holding up her hand. No, I'm not going to go on a date with you. I, he paused, looking confused. I was actually going to say you have some lint on your shirt. He reached forward and plucked a small piece of white fluff. Rachel scoffed. Why doesn't he want to be with me? Am I too old? A deep sense of fear settled in her chest. She remembered when she was in college, boys were banging down her door constantly looking for a hookup. She imagined herself as a withered old woman sitting in a rocking chair, alone, with nothing but a pair of knitting needles and daytime television. She pictured the ugliness of old age and becoming irrelevant, unwanted and unvalued. She quickly pushed the image and feelings away. Must be time for Botox. Did you enjoy the pictures I sent? She asked casually, inspecting her perfectly manicured nails. Evan grinned. Um... Sure. I'm just not looking for a relationship right now, you know? Just enjoying the bachelor life, trying to get through film school. As if I would date a college student, she scoffed, getting into position. Evan positioned the camera. Action, he called. Rachel held up a candle. This scent has been a huge comfort during this time. It just makes me feel like he's still here. She paused, pretending to hold back emotion. One sec, she sniffled. She took a deep breath and continued. It would mean a lot to me if you could light a wickwork candle in his memory and post a picture on social media. Be sure to tag me. Thank you. All right. And cut, Evan said, stopping the recording. That was brilliant, Leanne gushed. Rachel laughed. Thank you. Seriously, this is going to bring in so much publicity. I do what I can, Rachel said, tossing her hair behind her shoulder. Rachel sat at her desk and checked the last video she posted where she first announced the death of her husband. The comments were grotesque. Man of God. Damn, sorry her husband died. Don't mind me getting in line to be husband number two. Frost Lion. Yay, she's single now. Shadow King. As if you have a chance with someone like her. Red Rogue. I'd hit that. Damn, you need a shoulder to cry on? I'm available. Pray for you. You are goddess. You don't deserve anything bad to happen to you. I will protect you. Please respond to my DM. I will pray for you. Rachel laughed. All these lesser men trying to woo her through their comments. Pathetic, she enunciated, as she scrolled through the hundreds of compliments. She came across a few negative comments. Sweetheart of the South, I know you're hurting, but you really should cover up. As a Christian woman, you should know better than to tempt men. Broner Ranger, she ain't hurting no one. Rebel Print, NS266, lay off, lady, she's just expressing herself. You go, Rachel, my deepest condolences. Sweetheart of the South, she has mentioned she was a Christian many times, and that's just not how a godly woman dresses. Rebel Princess 266, Sweetheart of the South, who are you to say where her heart is at? She is a queen. Rachel, you keep doing you. Don't listen to the haters. Sweetheart of the South, 1 Timothy 2.9.10, Broner Ranger, what about the one where Jesus says not to judge? Rachel smiled as she read the comments. They were all fighting over her. She flipped her hair behind her shoulder and pulled up hottestofthemall.com. It was a website Rachel started anonymously. On the poll, there were the top trending YouTubers and people who would cast their vote for the hottest of them all. She pulled up the page and she saw an image of herself smiling back. As it should be, she said with a satisfied grin, closing the laptop. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this first chapter reading. And again, if you really want to check this out, I will leave a link to the Amazon link for this book in the description down below. I hope you all enjoyed this one, and I hope you're enjoying the series of Let's Read for Yourself. And like I said, 
There is no review for this book yet on this channel, but there will be in the near future, I can promise you that. And if you're curious to check out more, I do have a playlist of R.I. Polesgrove's works here on this channel if you want to show them some love and support. And again, if you also want to help them, I will leave a link to their Patreon in the description down below, oh, as well as their YouTube channel. Once again, thank you all for listening. Hope you all have a great day. This is Rambling Collector signing off for now, and I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great day, fellow readers.